This is Listen and Respond for uh, Yellow this week. This is the dot. This is the book we're going to be doing. So I need you to get your Respond and Blog paper out. We've made a new one. So this one is a little bit smaller. I've added sentence starters. I've also added Spanish for you guys that might need that to help you understand a little bit better what the questions are asking. So make sure your name is at the top. And we're going to put the title of the story on this line. So this title is The Dot. So The Dot. Okay. So let's go ahead and get started. It says, as college ready readers, we always use college ready sentences and we always support our ideas with evidence from the text. The first one wants us to preview. Readers always collect clues before they get started reading. Look at the front and back covers of the book before you start reading or listening to the story and fill in the chart below. What do you think this book is going to be about? Why do you think this? So I have sentence starters here for you to fill in. I think this book will be about blank. I think this because blank. Another thing this book might be about is blank. I think this because blank. So let's look. This is the front cover, the dot. Oh, and this is the back cover, another dot. So what do you think this story might be about? I think this will be about a dot. I think this because it is on the cover, the front and back cover. Okay, so what do you think it's going to be about? Fill that second box in and make sure you have them both done before you start listening to the story. Once you finish that, you can turn to the back. We're going to be looking for characters and setting. So let's go ahead and start reading. The Dot by Peter H. Reynolds. Our class was over, but Vashti sat glued to her chair. Her paper was empty. Vashti's teacher leaned over the blank paper. Ah, a polar bear in a snowstorm, she said. Very funny, said Vashti. I just can't draw. Her teacher smiled. Just make a mark and see where it takes you. Vashti grabbed a marker and gave the paper a good, strong, <coughs> excuse me, jab. There. Her teacher picked up the paper and studied it carefully. Hmm. She pushed the paper toward Vashti and quietly said, now sign it. Vashti thought for a moment, well, maybe I can't draw, but I can sign my name. The next week, when Vashti walked into art class, she was surprised to see what was hanging above her teacher's desk. It was the little dot she had drawn, her dot, all framed in swirly gold. So let's go ahead and pause here and jump back to our respondent blog document, Characters and Setting. Readers know that understanding the characters and setting of a story helps them understand what's going on. So here you're going to list the characters from the story and what you know about them. So the first thing we're going to write down is Vashti. And Vashti thinks she can't draw. Okay, and then what's another character is the teacher. So her teacher. And she seems like she's a very nice teacher because she said that nice thing about the, when Vashti hadn't done any work, she was like, oh, a polar bear in a snowstorm. And a nice teacher would say that even so sometimes teachers would come over and be like oh you haven't done any work but her teacher saw something positive even though she hadn't done anything so then the next thing if you can think of any other characters later on in the story or you think of anything you want to add to these characters you can totally come back and do that later what is the setting of the story hmm setting of the story is school right so then the next question says how does the setting match what is happening with the characters and my sentence starter says, the setting matches what is happening with the characters because blank. So think about it like this. She's at school and her teacher is helping her with her art. If she wasn't, like we know teachers and students, they work together when they're at school. If she was at the mall, if she was at the beach, if she was at a roller coaster, would that make a lot of sense? Probably not, because we know that teachers and students, they work together in school. And so that's why the author picked that setting. Why do you think that that's important? Why do you think it matches? Why do you think it goes together? So that's what you're going to write in this blank. Would it make sense if this character was doing these things at a different setting? 
Okay, so the next thing we're gonna work on is make a prediction. Readers always guess what might happen next. So we're gonna go ahead and jump back to the story. Hmm, I can make a better dot than that. She opened her never before used set of watercolors and set to work. So we're gonna pause here and go back to our paper. It wants us to make a prediction. Readers always guess what might happen next. What do you think might happen next? Something I think might happen next is, I think Vashti might add more to her painting, right? And I think this because a dot isn't very much, a dot isn't a lot, right? So. Maybe she's going to add some more. So I want you to take a minute. What do you think might happen next? Another thing that I think might happen next is blank. I think this because blank. Go ahead and fill in your predictions before you listen to the rest of the story. After you've done that, come back and see if you are correct. Vashti painted and painted. A red dot, a purple dot, a yellow dot, a blue dot. The blue mixed with the yellow. She discovered that she could make a green dot. Vashti kept experimenting lots of little dots in many colors. If I can make big, if I can make little dots, I can make big dots too. Vashti splashed her colors with a bigger brush on bigger paper to make bigger dots. Vashti even made a dot by not painting a dot. So I'm covering this up on purpose because I want you to I want you to jump to the visualize section of your re respond and blog paper. Readers always think about how this story might look in their heads. So this is the part where you're going to make your mind movie. And it says, what do you think this part of the story might look like? Why do you think this? So the sentence starter says, I'm imagining the part in the story where Foshti made a dot. By not making a dot. What does that mean? What do you see in your brain? How do you see her making a dot without painting a dot? So I want you to fill that in. And why do you think this? Tell me why you think this. So down here, you're going to tell me another thing that you think about how she made a dot without making a dot and why you think this. So go ahead and do that. And after you finish that part, I want you to jump back into the story and see if you were right. See if what you visualized is what the author drew or the illustrator drew. So finish that up, push pause, and then come back to the story. Vashti even made a dot by not painting a dot. So if you look right here, she painted all the way around and it made a circle in the middle. At the school art show a few weeks later, Vashti's mini dots made quite a splash. Vashti noticed a little boy gazing up at her. You're a really great artist. I wish I could draw, he said. I bet you can, said Vashti. Me? No, not me. I can't draw a straight line with a ruler. Vashti smiled. She handed the boy a blank sheet of paper. Show me. The boy's pencil shook as he drew his line. Vashti stared at the boy's squiggle, and then she said, Please sign it. The end. So now we're going to jump back to our respondent blog paper. You're going to summarize this story. Readers think about the most important parts of a book. So in your own words, give me a summary of the story you just listened to. So the story blank title of the story so the title of the story is the dot so you're going to fill that in right here the dot talks about Vashti she's the character I guess and her teacher in the beginning of the story what's going on what happens to Vashti in the beginning in the middle what's going on there what's the next thing that happens and in the end what's happening with Vashti there so go ahead and fill in the beginning middle and end of the story into these blanks. Then you're gonna turn here. You're gonna do the blog part. Open up Google Classroom for your color and start a new post. Select one of these options. You do not have to do both. You're picking this one or this one. So 
when you go to your Google Classroom for your color, at the top it'll say something like share a comment with your class. You're gonna click there and that's where you're gonna post either making connections or story continued. If you pick making connections, you're gonna follow the instructions on this side. If you pick story continued, you're gonna follow the instructions on this side. So making connections. Readers think about ways a book is similar to their own lives. So if you choose this one, you're going to title the post, making connections to the dot. That's your title, okay? So then you're gonna write about how you can connect to this book. Did you, something in the book remind you about something you know about in the real world? Did something you re read remind you of something in another book you've read or in a movie you've seen? Maybe you felt like you couldn't draw or something before and what happened to Vashti, maybe that happened to you. So after you've written a thoughtful response, you can look on Google to find a picture to match your thoughts. And then you can copy and paste it into your post. After you've done that, post what you've written. Or maybe you don't want to do that. Maybe you want to do story continued. So readers think about what might happen next if the book were to keep going. So for this one, you would go into your Google Classroom and at the top where it says share a thought with your class, you're going to click there and that's where you'll start typing. So you would type the dot continued. So that's what you first type. And then you're going to write about what might happen next at the story. So at the end of the story, she had the little boy sign his drawing. What do you think would be the next thing that would happen? So write about write a sentence about what happens next after that. And then you can look for a picture on Google, uh, on Google, like the image search. You can copy and paste that into your post and then click post. After you've done that and you're completely done with everything, if you did this paper on Google Docs, like online, make sure you click turn in. If you've completed this assignment on the paper one, make sure that your name is at the top and then put it in the drawer for your grade. And then you can move to Alexia, IXL, or Moby Max. If you didn't get to finish this one today, that's fine. Just keep it until Friday and then you can pick back up working on it on Friday.